Hey, welcome to this week's edition of Reb Talk. We've got three wonderful guests for you this week, and we're going to start it off with one of our student athletes from uh, multiple sports, football and baseball. And we're going to also uh, take it down the path a little bit further and meet our new football GM, Matt Lindsay. And then uh, also Coach Chris Malloy from golf is with us this week as we continue with our summer edition of Reb Talk. This is going to be the last one for a little while. We're going to take a little bit of a break and then uh, head into – uh, hopefully football in the in the fall just around the corner. Here is Jerry and Ely, my man. How are you doing, my friend? Can't really complain. Just happy that we're back here on campus and getting everything started. Yeah, no doubt. You know, just as a refresher, of course, Jerry plays both football and baseball and a true freshman All-American in football this past year, All-SEC first team by one publication, played in all 12 games, had a Fantastic year, rushed for 722 yards, second on the team. Uh, also had three 50-yard rushes, 6.9 average, 20 catches and a touchdown as well. And uh, in Southeast Louisiana, first Rebel freshman since 99 to tally a kickoff return and a rushing touchdown in the same game. So that was fun. And then you rolled it into the baseball season and uh, kind of got a, to a slow start and then got in the lineup, played a lot, and we were really rolling when baseball baseball hit, and Jerry was very much a part of that. And I want to go back, though, to the good old days, high school running the ball, playing baseball, enjoying things with all your buddies at, at Jackson Prep and all those days. You scored 84 touchdowns in high school. That's crazy, Jerry. Really? Was it more than that? You think it was more than that? No, I didn't think it was that many. <laughs> 84. Do you still t- stay in touch with, with, you know, the guys from the high school days? I do. I do. I talk to them just about every other week. Uh, Coach Black called me at least, at least once a month, if not once a week. And, uh, cool. But yeah, but I talk to them pretty much. I talk to them a lot, honestly. I talk to them a lot. From Walnut Grove, Mississippi. I know there's lots of things going on in Walnut Grove, right? Mm, yeah, you got a whole lot of nothing going on. <laughs> T- typical great Mississippi place, though, right? Right. Beautiful trees and beautiful land. <laughs> no doubt. Let me ask you this before we kind of get into your old Miss experience deeper. Um, who were some influence, Jerry, with you early on? I mean, you got that point where you're being highly recruited. The draft was coming on in baseball. But go back to even younger than that. Who were some people that helped kind of mold Jerry and Ely? Uh, my parents, my mom. My mom really helped mold me into the person I am today. And she still molded me into it new people and new a new person every day so uh my uncle uh arthur gardner he played a big role in my life he played in the, the pros for for some years and so uh he was kind of my backbone whenever i need someone to lean on and talk to and to gain information and about the game and my grandfather my grandfather uh, i'd say my grandfather as well i mean he's pretty much like my parent it's like a parent to me. Um, he don't miss many, very many games. Like my parents, they don't miss very many games. Uh, so he's always been there. He's always been someone I can just talk to, not about sports or anything, just whenever I need a conversation or a good laugh, that's a good person to talk to. It's always good to have have a base like that. And uh, did, did one of them turn you on to sports, or was that just something that – you know, you, you were accustomed to enjoying and looking forward to participating someday at a really young age. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like I just grew in love with sports. My family has a good background in sports, so I just kind of like hopped on a little bit. I mean, I always spent many weekends at the ball field, so uh, I really enjoyed playing them. And just getting to meet new people was – was my thing. I like meeting new people and just getting to know new things and how people view the world and their perspectives. So, you know, in this modern era, it, it's harder. Very few people are doing it, and that's playing multiple sports. And uh, you were able to pull that off and successfully in year one, which is really, really cool. I know, you, you know, you're very impactful on the football team, and the baseball thing was coming on strong before we had to, to shut it down. 
I know you probably, Jerry, before all that started, kind of envisioned how that was going to work out. But did it did it end up being what you expected? No, I did. It did. I mean, there's uh, honestly there was no difference between high school and college so far. I mean, the only thing in college that I did do in high school is, well, that I did in high school that I did, that I don't do in college is run track. So mm-hmm. honestly, my springs got a little easier. <laughs> so it wasn't quite as bad. Uh, let's load, go back. Load was light. Load was light with no tra- tracks. Tough. I mean, man. Yeah. yeah. When you think about it, and, and our track team at Ole Miss is probably the biggest team we got. I know you probably are friends with some of those people. I am. I am. Let's go back to football. Uh, when you got to the end of year one, I, I talked about some of the things you accomplished. But uh, as a team, obviously we wanted to to you know fare better, win some more games. But for you individually. Uh, just evaluate your first year. Mm, for my individual, me individually, uh, I had a pretty decent year from the standards, from the numbers and logistics of all that. But uh, I left a lot more out there. There's a lot more out there that I got to take care of. Uh, so I just got to continue on to to improve on the small things and just get better with the details. What are some of those things you'd like to do better? Mm, it's just the the tempo of how I run. Mm-hmm. Everything was full blast and full go. Uh, I never could really set up my second level defenders how I really wanted them to be sometimes. And so, so a lot of what we're doing a lot this year is a lot of tempo. And so, and Coach Smith teaches tempo, and and tempo could really change a two or three yard gain to a 50-yard game. So I feel like I left a lot of yards out there that I should go back and go get this year. Now, during baseball season, I know that when the new staff got here in football, they gave John Rice this iPad. You had one of these things, too. I guess it's an iPad, but it had all the plays on. So you're, so you're trying to play baseball. You're studying up on football. It's kind of a nonstop thing. And I saw you on know, a lot of trips, you know, you two hanging out, kind of visiting about different things things and all. Tell us what we can expect out of this new staff and, and new offense and what you like about it. Uh, you can expect a high, high pace, a lot of score, a lot of score, a lot of big plays. You can expect a lot of big plays. I feel like uh, you can expect our, our best athletes to have the ball in space, and uh, and is so it's gonna be a lot of fun around here. Well, you know, I, I saw John Rice looking at it a lot, and he was just getting excited about some of the the new type of, of plays that you might see in this new offense. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the type of plays that we have in here is they just blow your mind. It's kind of like, wow, it's so simple, but yet so complex. Easy to learn or difficult? I'd give it about a medium. I mean, it's not too hard to learn. Once you learn the basics, you pretty much learned, learned a lot. So you learn, if you can pick up on the basics pretty quickly, you're, you're fine. You know, this staff, Jerry, and I've talked to all of them, and, and it seems like it's a really good group of people that are that are coaching you guys. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love the staff. The staff is is one of the best staffs in the country, if not the best, all around. So we get to baseball. We're rolling along. We've won all these games. We're ripping off wins left and right. We're hitting home runs all over the place. Uh, you know, and then the COVID hit and shut things down. Uh, even though it was a small, you know, run for us, so we just about to start SEC play, it had to be fun. You had to feel like oh, you and the yeah. teammates were having a great time. Yes. Spring is probably the, my favorite year to see of the year by far. The eligibility thing, Jerry, let me ask you about that. So you basically get a year back in baseball that kind of offsets you with football, I guess, right? You and John Rice both, huh? It does. How's that going to work out for you? I think it's going to work out perfect. Uh, God has a plan, and this was in his plan, and I feel like his plan is what's best for me. What What do you think you need to do to be better in baseball next time around? Because what I told Coach Bianco, I interviewed him the other day, is I just want to flip a switch and start right back where we were. That would be fine. That would be <laughs> perfectly fine with me. What would you like to do better? Uh, just be more consistent. Consistency has always been a problem of, my, problem of mine on the baseball field. And uh, 
And I just want to be more consistent, more consistent at the plate. It's really the main thing. Well, it's fun to watch you play, that's for sure, even though it was a I don't know. I may have had more fun on the bus when you you did the idol song. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> hey, that was I still fun. got that in my phone. I need to send it to you. Uh, so I may have sent it to you. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Did I send it to you? Oh yeah. man, we need to post that again sometime. It was really fun. But uh, you, it seemed like that you really, even though you know you were a football guy, you you guys blended in with baseball really really well and contributed right off the off the bat that it seemed like it was very easy to to mix into baseball uh it was it was it kind of helped that i knew majority of them before even coming here so what about that, that staff what do you think about that staff i love that staff perfect staff for us perfect all right so i know you had the downtime with the covid we're back we're working out uh, we're trying to get ready for a football season that we hope that happens. What's the talk, you know, amongst the players about, um, you know, the upcoming season and hoping that it happens? Uh, everybody wants the season to happen. Everybody's ready. Uh, everybody's really ready to just put the pads on. We just want to want to hear some pads. Thump. I mean, everybody's really excited. No one has played football since the Egg Bowl, so everybody's really, really, really eager to get out there. Yeah, and there's still no football play. We we lost, so right. that's just, all is on our that's on our memory. You know, and as fans, Jerry, we're anxious to see what you know Lane Kiffin's all about, what staff's all about, what are we about to experience. You guys are getting the taste of it, obviously, learning the system and all. But you got to feel the same way too. We're ready to try this out, see how it works out. Yes, sir. I'm ready to get going. Ready to get going. Saturday can't come get here fast enough. Well, we're looking forward to it. Hey, it's always fun. It's great to get to know you better during the, the baseball season and all. And uh, can't wait to see how all that unfolds for you. Now, if we're playing, if we if they do delay this thing, we're playing football on top of baseball. You are going to be busy, man. I'm going to be busy, but it'll be just like playing track and football, or track and baseball over again. So the low for the spring, uh, go back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Hey, great visiting with you. Appreciate you, my man. And uh, good luck with getting ready for the upcoming season. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Jerry and Ely are one of our football slash baseball players here at Ole Miss. When we come back, we'll continue with Rev Talk. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question, would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in-store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with Smart Choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high-efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good, all right? That's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. 
Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reb Talk. Good visit with Jerry and Ely. What a tremendous athlete in two of our sports on uh, campus. Always good to catch up with him. And can't wait to see what he does the second time around. Uh, honored now in this middle section of Rep Talk, being able to visit and meet a lot of new people. And there's just been tons of them. They're trying to meet each other, in fact, uh, over the last year. We, we're talking now with Matt Lindsay, who's the new football general manager. And, Matt, we'll get you to tell us what that is here in a moment. But just tell the Ole Miss fan, uh, fans in general about your family. Yeah, um, I grew up kind of down the road a little bit. I, I grew up born and raised in Tuscaloosa. And I hope nobody holds that against me, but uh, I grew up in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I went to school at Alabama. Um, worked worked in the football office there the whole time I was an undergrad. Uh, from there, I moved on. I worked in the NFL for several years, um, working in the scouting department with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, so I was there kind of 13 through 16, worked my way up to college scouting coordinator, um, had a chance to get back in college football, work with Will Muschamp at South Carolina. So that's where I was at the last several years uh, up until February. Late, late February, I got here and um, – Obviously, it was kind of a weird time to transition. I was in the office for a couple of weeks, and then, um, like I said, before spring, you know, spring break came along, and then everything started getting shut down. So it's been an interesting time to transition into a new job, but it's still one that I'm very excited about. And you know, the staff. I mean, from Coach Kiffin to the to the coordinators to the assistant coaches to Coach Love, our strength coach. I mean, it's a phenomenal. You know, group of men, top to bottom, and then the support staff and some of the people that were here in place already. It's it's been it's been a lot of fun getting settled into Oxford and getting to know these people and um, growing up in SEC West country and being down the road, um, about three hours down the road. Um, I've always, Ole Miss and Oxford is always a place that I've admired, you know, from the colors to the uniforms to coming up here when Alabama played to, you know, go, seeing the Grove and, and being involved at Hemingway Stadium. And so it's, it's always been a place I've admired. I thought it was really cool. I always thought it would be cool to work here and, so it's been a joy to, to get a chance to be here and be in Oxford. So we, we've enjoyed it so far. You bring a wife and a pre-two-year-old girl. And yep. uh, and, and then, I, well, I guess you got to stay at home a lot like everybody else. Yeah. You're probably not accustomed to. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing you know, I tell people all the time, you know, professionally it's been hard you know, to try to get used to everything, transition to a new place and a new job over Zoom and phone calls and text messages. But – well, it's been hard professionally. Personally, it's been you know, really good and really beneficial. And so that's – I wouldn't trade that for anything. I know Coach Nick said that when he was on here a few weeks ago, like getting to spend that much time with, with, a, with a baby, with a toddler, has, has been a lot of fun. Yeah, no doubt. And you may never get to do this again. You'll be looking back on the COVID area. We're all going to say right. the, how awful 2020 was. But, nah, right. there's a few things that are positive. Yeah, no, it, it's been good. It's been good. You know, you kind of got to take the good with the bad, but all in all, it, it, it's been a time I'm going to look back on it and enjoy having this time for sure. We're visiting with Matt Lindsay. He's the new general manager of Ole Miss football. We're going to talk about that. It, it, you know, I look at your bio and it says, oversees the day to day operations of the Ole Miss football office, includes administrative duties with player personnel, recruiting, staffing, performance analytics, academic support, and other areas. The other areas you probably probably just thought would be no big deal, but the other areas have included dealing with all of this uh, COVID-19 uh, stuff, too. So other areas may be the biggest part of that, Matt. But just give our fans just a general sense of this position. Yeah, well, you know, my, my bread and butter, my background is in recruiting, uh, personnel, player evaluation. Obviously, from working in the recruiting office at Alabama to being, you know, scout at the NFL level. So that's – that's kind of my bread and butter. Um, and then with that, I've kind of grown you know, in some of the areas of administrative duties and things like that. And part of the reason why I wanted to come here was getting exposed to more of the administrative side of things. So, um, 
you know, when, when Coach Kiffin and I talked about this job, he likened it to, you know, an offensive coordinator becoming a head coach where they're still going to want to be involved in, in the offense and calling plays and things like that. That's kind of where I'm at right now is, you know, my main focus right now is the recruiting office and everything that touches. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, how much goes into it, but it's, it's evaluating players. It's, it's kind of handling our, you know, our database and our structure, of, you know, how we're setting the board and, you know, our film and um, you know, watching recruits film and things like that. But it's also, you know, whenever we get a chance to have kids back on campus, it's setting things like that up. It's social media and the marketing side of it. So it, it touches a lot of different departments. So that, that is my main focus. Um, but also getting a chance to, to, you know, sit in with um, our other senior support staff, um, senior associate ADs on, on budget and big picture items, and, you know, whether that's uh, Tom Kleinline, TK, or deputy AD, whether it's Angela Robinson, um, who heads up our business office, or even Keith Carter, um, or our head coach, Coach Kiffin, you know, getting to sit in with those people and, and you know, navigate our way through this, through kind of where we're heading, what we want to do. Um, so, yeah, it's it's definitely been a transition, but it's it's been good, and it's been something that – I kind of look forward to doing and kind of spreading my wings a little bit, you know, getting exposed to more. But, but yeah, Coach Kiffin, his his idea for this role was was to kind of, you know, oversee a lot of the support staff stuff and um, a lot of the other stuff that you mentioned. So, um, and every day I kind of figure out what other means, you know. So, um, but it but it's been good so far. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I think about. Uh, you guys getting here, and of course with the coaches, it was a short recruiting season, and had to just you know scramble and try to get done best you can. And now trying to get traction with COVID going on. Just how is how is that working out? Because it's so not normal to say the least. Yeah, I mean, you think you know first year staff, you're going to get you know a lot of kids on campus. You're going to attract kids from all over the south and kind of show them what you're about and and get to develop relationships with them because that's a lot of what recruiting is, is developing relationships. And I, th I think our coaches do a really good job of developing relationships, but, you know, unfortunately we haven't got those kids here physically on campus to put, you know, our arm around them and talk to them and look them in the eye. And so um, that has been a struggle. That has been, you know, it's something we've been dealing with, but I think it's an exciting challenge. I mean, we've met, we've talked about alternatives and things we need to do. Um, to share the experience of what it's like in Oxford, you know, whether it be virtually, you know, or getting kids on FaceTime, walking them around the building, introducing them to people, mm -hmm. um, you know, creating videos and content to show them what Oxford is all about. So um, it's been challenging and fun at the same time to figure out new ways to do that. But, um, but yeah, I'd be lying if I said it was easy for a first year staff to come in and then have all this taken away. So um, I mean, you, no, no on-campus visits, no, you know, going out on the road in the spring, identifying guys and finding guys and having our coaches meet high school coaches in the area, things like that. And then no summer camps either, which are a big part of recruiting as well. So, right. um, so yeah, all those things have been off the table. So um, we've got to, you know, find a new set of uh, parameters to work through. And, uh, but, but the good thing is everybody has the same rules. So they all have to do, you know, the same things we do. Um, we just don't have the benefit of, you know, having been there for a while and having kids on campus and things like that. Yeah, having a little roots to say this. You know, you, if you watched last week, Lane Kiffin even mentioned that, you know, this in this new world, we may sign somebody that we never really met in person, which yeah. you know, God, that's mind boggling. If, you, if, if I said that to you six months ago, you'd go, no way. Yeah, that's it's hard to believe, isn't it, dude? Yeah. But uh, we'll deal with it as we go. You know, one of the things under your title, too, talks about analytics. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lane Kiffin's talked about that. He's, he, he comes across to me, and you probably know him better than a lot of folks having an Alabama ties and all, but he, he comes across as a, a guy that really grasps hold of the old school stuff. You got his dad, Monty, who was, you know, successful and all, but really ties into the new way of thinking and doing things and brings it all together. He just seems like a unique head coach. He, he really is. I mean, you're, you're spot on with that, David. He, he, you know, has a lot of core football fundamentals ingrained in him. And that comes from Monty and, and some of the coaches that he's been around and learned from. And so, um, but he's also um, very forward thinking and intentional with, you know, what, what can we do to get better? Can we, can we push the envelope? You know, I mean, you know, when he got to be the coordinator at Alabama, I wasn't there for it, but I kind of watched it from afar and, you know, getting to see Alabama's offense start going fast and hurry up and, you know, 
five wide receivers and motions and shifts. And, and so he's always been one to kind of challenge the status quo and figure out what new ways to do stuff. So, yeah, one of the things here is, you know, kind of helping oversee some of the analytics initiatives, um, some of the services we subscribe to, whether it be um, for recruiting purposes, for coaching purposes. Um, so, yeah, that, that is a fun part. That's obviously something I think the NFL does a really good job at with, with monitoring um, players and, and, and having analytics, whether it be stuff that helps you make decisions as coaches or decisions as evaluators. Um, so, yeah, one, you know, we've, one of the things I, I'm really big on is just measurements and testing numbers. And um, so, you know, whether it's high school track times, whether it's 40 times broad jump vertical, um, those combine testing data points and stuff is, you know, making sure we have guys that have some baseline level of athleticism coming in here and guys that are bigger and stronger and longer. And, we're, you know, we're going to – those are things we're going to try to continually monitor as kids come on campus. We're going to monitor guys with our own – on our own team and stuff like that. And so that that's something we continually talk about is, is trying to get bigger, longer, faster athletes on campus here. Your opportunity with the Eagles, I mean, mm -hmm. at a, a relatively – early age I mean you know yeah. young in your career uh, that's got to lend toward what we're we're talking about and be I would think very valuable to you absolutely I mean I think him and uh, um, Chip Kelly are very similar in what their philosophy and, and wanting you know bigger longer faster guys and, and trying to find ways to verify things and verify speed and, and, and wanting to go fast and like we talked about with the offense you know pushing the status quo and so um, yeah they're very similar in that regard and um, but but having a good baseline of, you know, being at combines, being at pro days, running a pro day, um, learning how to manage a lot of data points and things like that. Those are all things I, I've taken from the NFL and took with me um, to South Carolina and then, you know, to here as well. Matt, have you been involved in any of the trying to go back and, and, and look at our existing players? I mean, that's been yeah. an issue I would think for our staff too, is that just haven't seen them before. You only got on tell You're just now getting a chance to see them you know, perform technically on the field. That's got to, I would think that's been difficult. It, it really has. I mean, not having spring ball um, makes that really hard because that's when a new staff really gets to know the players. And there may be some things that, that we do schematically that may help some players that, you know, maybe they were trying to play a different position last year or, or, or just, you know, um, just learning who they are as players. How do they think? How do they see stuff? You know, it's, it's so different when you can get out there and go up against somebody with a ball in the air and and uh, and see that rather than just, you know, right now we're watching them work out, you know, and things like that, which has been awesome. It kind of helps you feel like you're getting back to normal. But at the same time, it's still not football. And so we haven't got to see them with pads on. And so we've gone back. Um, we went back a little bit in June and we – this week, even we've done some stuff going back and watching cut ups and just trying to really familiarize familiarize ourselves with with our players from last year and who they who they were last year and what we think they can do now. And you know, some of these guys, especially some of these young guys, have made tremendous strides, you know, from from a year ago to now, just with their bodies and and getting stronger and bigger. So, um, but yeah, def definitely a challenge. But you know, we're finding ways to navigate that as well. Yep, whatever. That's that other part, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I visited with Jerry and Ely before we started. Great talent. Of course, we all had a chance to see him a year ago uh, and, and talk to him. And you, the day that we put on pads is, is going to be an exciting day for coaches and for players. Maybe more exciting. A lot of times you put on the pads and you're like, okay, here we go. But, I mean, I, he was so enthusiastic about putting on pads, showing you guys what he can do. And then seeing how what you want to do is going to benefit him too. I can just sense it in him. Yeah, I think I mean I think Jerry and I think there's a lot of you know of those young guys on offense that that we're all pretty excited to see in pads for in person for the first time. You know, so there there is there is a lot of uh, excitement building to see those guys play because because they made some exciting plays last year. That's for sure. So. You know, we think about in our league, and I know you're a league guy, you know, people outside the SEC don't get the chant. SEC, they don't get it. You know, we love beating up on each other, but we stick together. So you grew up in Tuscaloosa. I grew up in Oxford. And so that wet my taste for the SEC, obviously. So I know that as a kid, you, you, you said you, you had to probably say, I want to do that. You know, uh, I want to be involved in, in Southeastern Conference football. So this is basically your third stop. Uh, in the league. What makes this league 
you know, so super special? Uh, I mean, you know, it kind of starts with the, with the slogan. I mean, it just means more. Um, and you can take that a lot of ways. I mean, I think it means more to the fans, um, to the communities um, that are around each of the programs. Um, and I think it means more to the coaches, to the players, um, you know, just, just the buy-in, you know, from, from the, the cities, the communities, and, and the campuses. I mean, it's just – it's incredible how important – and a lot of these places, like I grew up in Tuscaloosa, so obviously there's no pro sports teams. Mm -hmm. So that – it, you know, Alabama was the biggest show in town when I was a kid and still is to this day. And here, same way. You know, there are no pro sports teams in Mississippi. So um, Ole Miss is, is the biggest show in town. And so – that that's you kind of find that in a lot of places around the SEC where that that is the big thing and so um, but yeah it's it's really unique um, it was kind of weird moving up to the Northeast when I lived in Philadelphia where mm -hmm. Saturdays were weren't you know um, <laughs> as revered as they are in the South you know and so it's more about Sundays up there and Sundays are crazy but it's nothing like a Saturday in the South that's for sure. No doubt, a lot of lot of fun, and we just hope we get back to some degree of of normal. I know you guys, you guys are uh, hoping for that too. There's a lot of scenarios out there, a lot of what ifs, and I know that as the GM of Ole Miss football, Matt Lindsay's dealing with a lot of 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 what ifs. But and and Keith Carter's been sensational. I think he's the right guy in, the, in our position uh, now too, as the as the AD. But hopefully you know we can get this behind us and have you been working on in in your thing here that says other areas what about vaccine for COVID-19 you got that going uh I, I don't know if I'm qualified to, to do that <laughs> Just, yeah yeah but, but maybe that'll happen that would be a game changer we got Dr. Crowther on that I know I know yeah him, him and Shannon they, they can work on a cure for this so and if they don't get it, we'll just we'll, just, we'll blame them for it, right? That's right. <laughs> Listen, great to to talk to you. I hate we our first meeting was this way, but we're gonna we're gonna hang out together a lot when this thing gets over, and uh, hopefully everything will be heading in the right direction here as they make a decision pretty soon. Yeah, well, David, thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. All right, Matt, appreciate you. Hey, right. when we come back, golf coach Chris Malloy. We'll talk to him next. In sports, success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. In fact, 9 out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend Shelter to a friend. To find out how Shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Kasasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average-sized gas tank, or maybe a nice mint on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. As hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. 
We've been deemed an essential business, so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. Hey, welcome back to Rev Talk, and uh, we're wrapping up Rev Talk this week for a while. Take a little break, and uh, our goal, our goal is the next time we come back on, this guy I'm about to talk to will be the number one guest. He'll be the first guest on, and it'll be live at Boo Ray, hopefully, or live somewhere. Right, Coach Malloy? <laughs> we will take that. Anything live at this point. Anything live from a, a location is a is a good idea. That's for sure. Hey, we're tickled to have Coach. Uh, Chris Malloy is our golf coach at Ole Miss. He's entering his seventh season and, of course, had this last one sort of shut down. And like some of our other sports, they were doing a great job off to uh, a wonderful start. And he's a former player from uh, Ole Miss. And uh, we were able to get him back here, of course, a golf cor- uh, as a golf coach here. And most of you know uh, Co- Coach Malloy very, very, very well. And I, I'd start with just, hey, how are you doing? How are you dealing with the COVID-19 with the family and the players for that matter? Yeah, we're healthy, which which I guess that's the that's the most positive thing. Um, you know, it's we got cabin fever. You know, my my wife made the comment. Uh, uh, we were with some friends the other day that, you know, listen, I we're, we're trying to figure out if our marriage was built on this or not. I think our marriage more built on, you know, me being on the road and recruiting this time of year and then traveling to when we're in season. So just like you, you know that feeling. And, um, but no, we're we're good. We're I'm ready to get the guys back. You know that it's been it's been a long time. I think we've done a good job with with trying to stay busy. Um, you know the fortunate part that we have with with our guys is you know they left just like a lot of our student athletes, um, and and they have not really for the most part been back to you know, to, to campus. But we're used to it. You know normally mm-hmm. in in the sport of golf, you know we leave the NCAA championship you know Memorial Day weekend. And those guys are taking off and, and, uh, and they're going back home or they're going, you know, some of them in some cases are, are flying directly to a tournament, uh, amateur tournament, and getting their summers uh, kicked off. And then we normally don't see them again until, until we start the fall semester. So if there's any sport that's remotely, I think, equipped, you know, for, <laughs> for this, it's probably us. But, but even then, we're not used to this big of a break. So I know our guys are get are ready to get back in town, and, and I'm certainly ready for them to get here. You know, it's, it's interesting that they do get a chance playing summer. Do some of yours playing this summer? Um, I talked to Coach Hinkins a few weeks ago, and I know that uh, some of the girls are getting a chance to play. Yeah, they're, you know, we have five of them playing this week, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, they get off to a slow start. You know, normally those amateur tournaments, um, you know, it's, it's basically that first week in June, they really kick off and, and the guys are, you know, kind of blowing and going there. And, and uh, it, it got off to a slow start. You know, I think everyone waited for the PGA Tour uh, to, to get kicked off and, and got a sense of comfort there. But really since the end of June, um, you know, all the way to, to this point in time and then going forward, uh, you know, it's, it's basically like a, a full summer, almost like a regular summer, which has been good so far. You know, you mentioned uh, marriage is being strong because we're gone. I, Mary and I are about to hit our 40th anniversary, August 16th. So there's your goal for you and Daniel. Wow. Yeah. Well, listen, it, listen. If we if we have many more of these coronavirus summers, I'm not sure that we're gonna we're we're gonna make it. I'm not sure she's gonna keep me around. <laughs> that was going to be my point exactly. I, I'm not sure <laughs> August is gonna happen because usually in the spring she loves some sports and loves to travel, but me being home every weekend has just not been her thing. I know that's for sure. Exactly. Two, you got two wonderful kids. Uh, Cash recently became a superstar with his little video deal. Uh, and then, of course, your wife, Danielle, and you got Kaylee. Kaylee's, uh, I don't know, she's one of the sharpest kids in the world, I guess. You got to be awfully happy about your family unit, so to speak. We are. And, and DK, I'm not, you know, saying it to say it, but that, that's been the one positive that's that's come out of all this mm-hmm. is – you know, I've, I've had a chance, you know, to be around and, and, uh, you know, I haven't been traveling on their birthdays and, um, that, that part has been, has been nice as much as, as much as, you know, we've you know, hated being away from our teams and maybe not being on the road recruiting, um, you know, with, with my kids, 
you know, five and, and nine years old, um, it, it's a time that in our lives that we'll never get back. So you know, I can at least take that, you know, with us. And, and it's funny the you know, Cash's Grace deal is <laughs> it, we would sit down even, you know, well before this, uh, you know, uh, coronavirus, but especially, you know, once the coronavirus started, you know, we'd sit down and say grace and, and Kaylee does a great job. And then Cash gets on there and he's so heartfelt. And we went through about three or four of them. And I'm going, I'm looking at Danielle going, like, this is gold. I have, like, I have to share this. I mean, he'll get in there. And we, I mean, again, not one of them. You don't have any prompting, no anything. And it's, you know, heartfelt, you know, please, Coach Kerman. He, you know, you know, Coach Kerman's been like a second dad to him. I mean, like, he, he loves going over and seeing he and Betty and Allie and, you know, and he'll hear Coach Kermit. I think that's where we're probably one of them started. You know, here, here's Coach Kermit, you know, like complaining or getting worked up about something. And he'll go, please help Coach Kermit deal with, you know, his player that was unhappy with him. And I hope, you know, like there's fun stuff that he means should, it. You know, we laugh at that. Heart. We should all pray like kids. I mean, right. we're just so sincere at his prayer. You know, he wants football bows. Wait for him to say something about golf. I mean, it seemed like yeah. He like, yeah, he cares more, much more about the football aspect than the, you know, than, than the golf. So he's uh, go, to, go to coach's uh, Twitter site and pull that up if you haven't seen. It. It's really cool. Cash praying for sports to come back. I was with him too, big time. Yep. Hey, we were all there. Exactly. And he was saying it. I, I kind of started laughing. I said, "Well, this is this is fitting." I'm glad I recorded this one. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, but it will be fun to get back. You know, I, I've known you for a while. I know you. Great personality, and. I hate to put this tag on you, but you're a player's coach. You're a people person, you know. So this downtime, even though you got to spend the family time, I know not being around you guys is, is tough. And I know some other coaches feel the, the same way. But I want to talk about some of them because I know you're passionate about your current team too. But we, we can start with uh, Jackson Super. What an incredible golfer. We had him on Rep Talk, in fact, this past spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, he's a good one to start with. Um, and, and listen, we, I think we have an incredibly – a great young nucleus of guys. I mean, if you look at, if you assume that, um, you know, which they do, you know, each of our guys, you know, gets an extra year. You got to remember, you know, mm -hmm. so you know, right. we granted a extra year of eligibility to, to everyone from this past year. Uh, you know, our roster this year is going to be five freshmen, five sophomores and a, and a junior. Um, and the junior will be Cecil Wegner, who was, who was out this past year with a medical redshirt. He had double hip surgery and he was arguably one of our best players from the, um, you know, from the previous year. So we love our nucleus. Um, if you look at this past year, you know, certainly it started with, with Suber and uh, he's, he's, he just, he, he's one you want to coach. I can tell you that he, he does all the right things and he's getting better. He wants to get better. Um, so we're, we're certainly, you know, happy to have him back for, you know, for at least a couple of, you know, more years. And then, you know, again, in that, what you would consider the sophomore class, you go right down, you have, you know, uh, Sarut Monchasit, um, who, who played incredibly well for us. Um, you know, Charlie Miller, who's had a, who's had a great summer. He's gotten off to, you know, to, to a great start. You have Jack Nam, you know, like I said, I can go, I can go on and on, you know, with, with the guys, but we have a, an incredibly good nucleus of guys that uh, has some bright, uh, bright future in front of them. You know, you, you think about um, Jackson too. I know that recently we did, we had a story on him being ping all region and uh, put together several good rounds uh, in a row before things kind of came to an end. I think he, if I remember he was ninth in the SEC in stroke average um, at 71 something. I can't remember what it is now, but overall, uh, 16 rounds, I think, in our notes of par or less. I mean, that's good. You, when you think about Braden and the guys you've been able to get, especially in recent years, you, you got to feel good about the trajectory that recruiting is going. I know when you came here, you wanted to get this program where it's getting the NCAA on a regular basis and those things are happening. You've raised the bar to a really cool level. And is it easier or is it harder to recruit when that bar goes up? You know, I, I think it's always hard. Um, has it gotten, you know, maybe easier, you know, possibly. Um, but again, you're, you're going after, you know, you know, better, you know, talent mm -hmm. and better talent, better talent. And 
and uh, you know, but we we really been doing that since day one here, right? And right. and uh, uh, I, I think that with Braden after he won the NCAA championship, you know, we we certainly got you know some more looks. You know, I think the knock against Ole Miss, uh, you know, men's golf before was well, you can't do it there. You know, look, they don't have a track record, and um, and, and I, people can't say that anymore. You know, now mm-hmm. we, we have an NCAA mm-hmm. tro- you know trophy. Uh, you know, sitting in there and, and uh, you know, they've, they've seen what Braden's done. And then again, they're looking at what guys like Jackson Suber um, are, are continuing to, to do. And, and DK, like we may not always get the five-star guys right now. Um, and, and I'm not so sure that, that, that that's our style. Um, you know, I, I'd rather get the right guy in there. And I know it's probably a coaching cliche, right? I mean, you hear that, you know, sometimes, but, but really, with me, um, I, I want to get I want to get the guy that's tough, and you know maybe that's not the five star guy. You know maybe that's the four star guy that we figure is a is a lot better fit. That's you know that's going to be tough, and we we know we can go into tough golf courses and you know tough conditions with that. That's what I want people to think of when they think of Ole Miss, you know golf. Uh, and again, you saw that with with Braden Thornberry, and, and Braden didn't start that way. You know Braden would be the first to tell you that. You know, he really had to, um, you know, get tougher, you know, after after his freshman year. And, and he did a great job of that. And, again, with, with you know, Suber and Charlie Miller and Sarut and these, you know, Jack Nam, um, you know, the, those are guys that have that have bought into this. And it doesn't happen in one year. You know, it, it takes some time. Um, but I think what you're seeing now, and especially, as I mentioned, if you have what you call five, you know, freshmen, five sophomores – we're getting deeper and we're getting guys that are creating a culture to help with these younger guys and the sophomore class that I, that I call a sophomore class. They're not really sophomores. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Charlie Miller, you had red shirted and then now he's got an extra year. I mean, so they're, they're older. They're, a, they're veteran sophomores. I mean, they're, they're juniors and almost seniors that are, you know, they're sophomores, um, which again, in time will help us immensely. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I know that other schools have different dynamics with this extra year thing, depending on if they had a bunch of seniors or, or if some of those people didn't want to stay or, or whatever the case may be. But it's going to make it interesting when we, when we get back and, and roll in to see how that all unfolds. Now, you're an Ole Miss guy. You know, you look at our, all our head coaches, and it happens occasionally. We get somebody that played at the school, and they stay there, and they coach, and yada, yada, yada. In your case, you came back to your alma mater, uh, to do the golf thing, but your passion for all the sports at our school is phenomenal. I know you'll jump on a plane and go with us to a basketball trip if the opportunity exists. And uh, how much fun are you having just being at Ole Miss as an Ole Miss Rebel and getting to be around all of it, including bringing our golf team to a, a special level? It, listen, it, it's a dream come true. And I try to explain that to people all the time that um, – the hard part, you know, I mean, maybe you say my eggs are all in one basket. Usually if you go, like, when I, let's say I was coaching at Florida State or at South Florida, well, you know, that that's your employer and your heart's into it, right? I mean, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, that's your team and, you know, you embrace it and, and you love it. But then you have Ole Miss, right? I mean, I went to school at Ole Miss, right? So I have two teams. And the only problem you have is when they play each other, you know, like, whoa, all right. You know, who am I rooting for there? Um you know, but here, kind of put all your eggs in one basket, so you're overly invested. You know, that's why I, you know, I look at you know Keith Carter, you know, a lot, and 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 Lynette, you know, quite a bit, and I go, okay, I was acting like a little bit too much of a fan there, wasn't I? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like I'm probably a little bit too emotional on the, on this deal, and uh, didn't mean to say that, but you know, I like I love it, uh, but it's a, it it honestly is a a dream come true. I mean, you know, think about it to, to go in, to be a coach at your alma mater, you know, with your take, take your son and daughter, you know, bringing cash and Kaylee and, and Danielle uh, into it and, and showing them what I love and what I'm so, so passionate about. And, and it bleeds over into the, you know, the, the culture of our program too. And, and talking to recruits. I mean, there, mm-hmm. there's no one that can sell, you know, Ole Miss in my opinion, you know, better than, better than me or there shouldn't be um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and it, it share my view, share my vision of, you know, why, you know, why I chose, you know, this special place. So 
Um, yes, I mean, getting, getting to go up to, you know, went to Tennessee this year, uh, went to Georgia last year with, with Kermit, who's turned into to, to one of my closest friends and you know, I've known Lane a long time. And, and to get to know, you know, uh, you know, Coach Bianco is, you know, it's for me, especially with Coach, you know, Bianco, like, it's a guy that just, I mean, I watched on TV because, you know, he got here as I, as, as I left as a student athlete. So I've watched him from afar and, and come back up, going to baseball games. Um, so to be, you know, I, I guess the fan in me, you know, you're sitting in a head coach's meeting, you're kind of looking around going, wow, like <laughs> I'm actually, you know, a head coach at my alma mater at Ole Miss. And, you know, I got guys that I, you know, consider like, you know, coach, you know, Bianco a legend, you know, sitting right there and he's asking me what my opinion is. I'm like, my opinion doesn't really mean anything. I don't think like, yeah. I'll do whatever you think is best. So yeah. it, it's been awesome. And I tell you, the other cool part is, I mean, like with, you know, with Keith now, you know, being mm -hmm. in charge, you know, Keith lived directly across the hall from me, you know, when, uh, you know, we were over in, uh, in Kennard, um, is, is athletes. I lived with Johnny Rogers and Ansu Cisse and Chris Oni. So, you know, having Sue back wow. up here last year, you know, that mm -hmm. was, that was my guy. That was, you know, one of my, one of my good friends. So with Keith leading the way, it's it's honestly it's it it's it's a dream come true well and i know it's good but it's obviously special uh for you hey we had some uh uh guys for the first time in school history three old miss uh golfers men's golfers named to the uh golf all america scholars by the golf coaches association uh jack nam charlie miller and jackson suber who you've already talked about uh how good they are as players but I was kidding you before we came on. I said they must be a lot smarter than, than when you and I were going to Ole Miss. But, uh, <laughs> but no doubt, you got to be proud of them, and especially just academically in general for the men's golf team. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know they've done a great job uh, each year, and and those three are, are studs in the classroom. And I mean, DK, I don't have to say anything to them. You know, like there's, mm -hmm. you know, there there's no checking up. You know, checking up. You know, academically, even if I you know, they, they happen to mess up on a test here or there. I mean, it's, Hey, you got this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or, you know, got it coach. And I don't, I don't worry about it again. So uh, again, I try to explain to our guys, you know, quite a bit, it's, it's attention to detail and it's uh, I probably had one or two players ever, you know, that were good players, um, you know, that weren't very good students. So it's mm -hmm. one thing to be competitive again, that's that attention to detail and, and you'll notice, you know, there there's a direct correlation between the 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 best stroke averages on our team and the best GPAs. Um, wow. And, you know, so it's um, you know that that's kind of cool to see. I would have never noticed that as a as a student athlete. I probably wish somebody would have clued me in on that a little bit. But uh, no, I'm proud of those guys. Hey, and before I let you go to uh, women's golf, I know you're a huge supporter of Corey and, and that bunch, and she's a former SEC player herself and man they were on a roll too when the spring uh came to an end but i know that both teams root and pull for each other pretty hard oh i mean she, i mean Corey and i mean like you know, Corey's one of my best friends here yeah you know, i talked her into you know to to moving you know five houses down you know building a house five houses down from me and they are i mean i i mean i really i i talk to Corey every single day um she's spectacular um, you know, obviously great family and, uh, and then Zach has, has done an incredible job, uh, and it's been fun to watch and it's been fun to watch, you know, their team push our team and, and, uh, you know, they're in it together. I mean, you know, our guys were there waiting for them when they came back with the SEC trophy last year. And, and it was funny, I called our guys and, and, uh, or, you know, just sent out a text chain, Hey, listen, the girls team's going to be back. You know, I think it'd be a good idea to, you know, to, you know, to, for you guys to come out there and I mean like clockwork they go coach we already know we're we're texting with the girls we know what time they're coming back we'll be there and uh so that I think that just you know shows a glimpse and uh you know how close the teams are they're very competitive um but but sure enough they they push one another and you know they're they're doing a tremendous job it's been fun to watch and watch Julia and, and the whole literally it's, it's not just her it's it's that whole team and you know, I, I told Corey and Zach, I said, listen, I mean, basically with SEC championship getting canceled this year, you won it again. So you're back-to-back -back SEC championship. So right. two, year, two years in a row. You don't have to mention the second year we didn't play. I mean, just yeah. say yes. two years in a row, you know, we're – We held the title. 
we held the title. So, uh, no, there, it's been awesome. And uh, I, I'm telling you, the best is the best is yet to come for uh, for both programs. And before I let you go, last thing, uh, I know that we look at the football staff and there's 275 people, it seems like, you know, <laughs> and it's, a, it's an army of people. And from the men's golf standpoint, it's a smaller group of people. But as, as I let you go tonight, brag on, brag on the, your staff and support staff and, and what they mean to your players. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, you know Matt Bordas, our, our assistant coach, is, he is awesome. I mean, and, uh, you know, we brought him, you know, brought Matt in last year from Stanford. They won the national championship. And uh, he is, you know, Kyle Ellis, you know, was, was my assistant uh, the previous, mm -hmm. I guess, five years. And mm -hmm. just a, a rock star of a guy. They don't get any better. And he did a tremendous job for us. Um, you know, I was lucky to have him for as long as I did. Uh, but, but Kyle and I's personality was a lot, you know, like each other. And then I made a, a concerted effort to get somebody that, was a lot, almost the opposite of me, you know, to, you know, to provide for the guys and, and give a different perspective. And, uh, and that's been great, you know, certainly so far. So, um, but with everyone, I mean, you know, I, it, it's funny, you know, I bring recruits in and, you know, I, I let them meet with basically our external team, which is everyone, you know, from, you know, Cuff, you know, coming in and, and talking to them and, uh, you know, Jason List. And uh, I mean, like, it's just that, we, we have such a great support staff uh, all around, you know, even over the academic department that uh, you couldn't ask for much more. But, uh, again, lucky to have every one of them. And they probably make me uh, look like a, a lot better, you know, coach than I am uh, a lot of the time. So I'm thankful for that. Oh, listen, hey, it, we've been friends a while. You do a heck of a job. It's incredible. It's, it's, it's cool that you are an old Miss guy. But it's also cool that you're a tremendous coach and, we sure appreciate any time you come on and hang out with us. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Let's get hey, – Louis has got to get back to uh, actually playing sports now. I know it. Let's do it somehow. <laughs> I figured by now you'd have COVID vaccine figured out. I mean, come on. I'm working on that. Listen, I'm just telling you, that's next week's project. So, <laughs> I've been working yeah. too much around – Daniel's had me working too much around the house. So, uh, Kaylee and I are going to go. We're going we're gonna to get uh, COVID solved next week for you guys. Uh, yeah, Kaylee. I was going to say, put Kaylee on it. We got a shot if you put Kaylee on it. <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you, man. We sure appreciate you. Thanks. Appreciate it, DK. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy indeed. And thank you for joining Rev Talk. We'll catch you down the road.